We just got a very special update for Planet Zoo's fourth anniversary, and that update is the addition of the wonderful collared peccary. That's right, folks, you probably know this already, but we got a brand new little pig adjacent animal, and I am very excited to build a habitat for them today. Let's get started by just laying out the basic terrain shapes of the habitat. From looking at references online from zoos all around the world, it seems that zoos like like to go with kind of this canyon theme so I think that's pretty neat and I definitely want to emulate that. I almost want to emulate also the vibe of uh, the map in the hunter. I'm thinking that we maybe raise up the back as well. Just create a nice little backdrop. You know, this is this would be something where they wouldn't be able to traverse, but we still need the terrain there just so we have something to work from. That's a pretty sizable habitat. I think we have a good foundation. You can see that there's some canyons that they can run through. Uh, they have a little bit of privacy if they hide behind these rocks right here. Don't mind them floating. Uh, they just, they tend to do that. They'll, they'll get over it. But then you have pretty easy viewing access because they can go up here on this top part and then you can easily see them running around down here. Yeah, it's a large habitat, but I want this to look super cool. So why don't we just cover this whole thing in sand? I think that would be a good base to see kind of what we're dealing with here. Yeah, that is looking much better already. I'm thinking a dry grassland type of vibe. Now, as you guys probably know, I usually don't use modded props in these builds, but today I am going to change that because I have just been itching to use the faux rock pack and these work so perfectly. Like the texture is exactly what I'm going for. So sorry guys. Uh, I'm using mods today. It's my channel. I can do what I want. So I think if we just get these lined up, maybe tilt it a little bit, we can create a nice look here. And I'll, I'll fix the terrain, you know, to make it look a lot better because there are going to be some gaps, but we can fix that. That's easy. Yeah, we'll start there. We'll start there. Nice and simple. Let's see what else we got. We have these. These are the cave walls. That's a pretty cool texture, actually. Maybe we can kind of build it up like over here. Yeah, I'm liking that. I think this definitely has potential. You know, what would be cool is if we had the tree trunk like this, so that way they could crawl through it. I mean, that's so cool, right? I almost wish that this was just a tiny bit smaller. Like, I feel like it's just ever so slightly too big. I don't want it sticking up too too much, but I think if it was any smaller, they probably wouldn't be able to get through it because of their hitbox. Yeah, I think this will be fine. We we can make it work. We'll just put that there and then we'll we'll come back to it, change the color and everything. We can actually probably just make this look a little smaller by editing the terrain around it to be taller. All right, we're just gonna use a classic perspective hack. See, look, looks smaller already just because this is that much taller. Now, I do need to make this back wall taller or else the little peccaries are going to escape. And we cannot have that. And you know what I just realized? This acts as a bridge over this little island over here. So now they can actually walk on top of here. It was meant to be. Now I am going to blend in some regular rocks just to break up the textures because it can look just a little monotonous like over here. We don't want too many of these repeating right next to each other or it's going to be pretty obvious. And could I do this whole thing with just base game rocks? Maybe, but I don't want to. So I am not going to. Okay, this may not look the best as I'm working on it, but you guys, you gotta trust the process, okay? Trust the process. I'm sure it'll look fine in the end, I think. I have just discovered these Outback Pack rocks, and I think these are gonna make all of the difference. Stylistically, they're a little bit different, but again, we're blending all sorts of themes and styles here, so we're just gonna roll with it. I mean, come on, is this not exactly what we're going for here? I think what I'm gonna do here for these rocks that are taking up the back wall is I'm gonna make them into a different group. 
And what I really need to do is start taking sections of them and making them darker. So that way they stand out a little bit more and it's going to kind of break up the colors because it's very, very homogenous right now. Having everything be the same color is super boring. The best thing about creating your own rock formations is you can just take something like this, copy it, and paste it. And nobody will know except you guys. But take this as advice, okay? Okay? I want you to steal this as I am stealing from myself. Okay, I think that's the main bulk of the rock work done. Thank goodness I am ready to move on. Let's do some planting. I think we'll just start out by placing some of these manzanitas just along the outskirts. And of course, since we are allowed to use mods in this build, I can finally use the outback dead trees. I was eyeballing these my entire time of building for the Oceania pack zoo, but you know, I wasn't using mods so I couldn't use them and it was breaking my heart. So this makes me super happy to be able to use them finally. What we really need is a fallen tree next to a dead tree on top of a tree tunnel. If you guys can't already tell, I love dead trees and habitats. It ironically brings a lot of life into them. It is taking everything in my power not to use the bristlecone pine, but I cannot justify at this time. And of course, on this dead tree, we're gonna need some mushrooms. Only in the shadier parts though, since this is supposed to be a super dry habitat, uh, we can't really have them facing too much sun or they'll probably just burn up. Something that's great that you can do with the manzanita trees is sink them far into the ground. Now, I know that this is a common tactic for many of the in-game trees, but manzanitas I actually see with the tiniest little sprouts all over the place. I see it all the time when I go hiking, even though this isn't meant to be a realistic habitat. Incorporating some elements of it can make it a little bit more believable. We're gonna place some more, but just where the manzanita sprouts are, so we can kind of indicate that a fire came through here and everything is regrowing and it's gonna be nice and lush soon. And thank goodness for modded trees, because I do not want to make these myself out of just the tiny little branches that we have. Yeah, I think that looks perfect. I love it. Now, I can't help but include some roots along these rock walls here. Like it's a dry creek bed. These aren't exactly the right hue for what I'm looking for, but we're limited on options here, so I'll make do with what I can get. Yes, I am going back to rock work, but it's because we need the gravel, okay? There are going to be about 2 billion pieces in this exhibit, but I don't care, it looks pretty. Okay, we're almost done with landscaping this massive habitat. We just need to go absolutely nuts with the grass in certain places, like around here. Here. It's looking very bald, so we're gonna give it hair transplants. Now to finish it off, I just need to edit the terrain painting a little bit. I do wish I was building in a different biome so I could have some slightly more matching textures, but I'm sure this will be fine. Let's just kind of blend this sand a little bit. I mean, the coarse sand is really the perfect texture, but it looks way too bland right now with just that. So we're going to have to spread in some dirt, change it up a little bit. I think that looks great. Now, all we need is a shelter, but I don't really have any ideas. So let me think something up. Now, look, this is what I came up with. Oh my God, bro. I didn't have a lot of ideas, so I hope you guys like it because I spent way too much time on it to be changing it now. Although it is missing something. You guys see where I'm going with this? Now, all we gotta do is maybe angle it down a little bit. We want it nice and welcoming. Let's just fix the terrain a little bit. Okay. I think this is just the perfect width. Now that is an entrance. All we need to do is uh, the rest of it. <laughs> His eyes are looking a little dead inside, so I think we can do something to change that. I don't know if that's better or worse. This is mildly terrifying. I hope you guys know that this is me trying my best. This is the best I can do. It does not get any better than this. 
Now all we need is a roof. No one's gonna see it, so doesn't matter what it looks like. Now that is a complete shelter. Look at that. What a beauty. I do need to finish this off with a little bit of fencing. I do need to disguise this just a little bit from the outside so it's not, you know, too weird looking. Then we're doing the old trick of copying and pasting rocks. Everybody's favorite. Put a little end cap on there and boom. Now all we need to do is just take these fences from a blueprint I made. These are available on the Steamworks shop. I'll put a link in the description. You might recognize them from my Oceania pack video. And why don't we go ahead and change the color on these actually. I think we'll go with a nice yellow color because why not? Who doesn't love a good splash of color in a habitat? Oops, I left it blue on the other side, but we're just gonna say that that is a design choice. And now all we need to do is finish this off by adding a raised path. I really like the natural or null paths just because I think their fence texture is really good. As as well as their just normal texture. It's very, very plain. You know, I think this habitat stands out on its own, so I want something that is very subtle. Yeah, I think that looks great. I love this habitat. Surprisingly, their traversable area is awesome, so no issues there. Oh, wait, except for in here. Hold on, that's kind of important. Always check your habitats for traversable area, people. How about now? Huh, they really don't want to go back there. They can't even go through the tree? All right, never mind. No tree for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Make sure to leave a like and tell me in the comments down below what you think of the habitat and if you're excited for the new anniversary animal. I can't believe that this game has been out for four years already. There is just so much content. I love it. I've been having so much fun making these videos lately. So don't forget to subscribe so you can see more content like this in the future. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.